If you've ever wondered how a menstrual cup works inside your body, that's what we're going to teach you today using my anatomy model and some other helpful educational tools. Hi, I'm Kim Rosas and I am a menstrual cup educator and have been for almost 10 years, starting with one of my very first videos similar to this on this channel. I wanted to give an updated version because not only are we gonna discuss menstrual cup anatomy, we're also gonna discuss menstrual discs and how those work in your anatomy. So let's get started. If you're new here, take a moment and subscribe for more menstrual cup and menstrual disc educational content. A menstrual cup is a bullet-shaped or possibly spherical-shaped object that makes a seal inside the vaginal walls. It catches your menstrual fluid and you can wear it up to 12 hours, which is a game changer. The menstrual fluid, which is accumulating during your month and will be shed during your period, when it exits through the cervix, it comes out and down the vaginal canal. So if you're using a tampon, it is absorbed. If you're using a menstrual cup or a menstrual disc, it is collected, not absorbed, it is caught in that product. Or if you're using a pad or something like period underwear, it actually exits the vaginal opening and into that product. It absorbs into the product in the underwear or the pad. So that is how all of that works. Quickly going over the anatomy, it helps to explain it as a cross section. This should give you an idea of what we're working with here. This is your uterus and right here at the base, that is your cervix. This is where your period blood comes out and what makes sure your cup is never lost inside of you. This is the clitoris. This is the bladder and the urethra where pee comes out. Here is the vaginal canal where blood exits. This is the rectum leading to the anus where the poop comes out. When people ask me, can you pee with a menstrual cup in? The answer is yes, when you think about the anatomy, but if you've never thought about it, you do have three holes. So one, two, three holes. That should make you breathe a little easier that this is not going to interfere with any of your bodily functions. The menstrual cup sits below the cervix and catches the flow. If you are putting in the cup, you wanna make sure you don't accidentally go past the cervix. If it is tilted towards the back or towards the front, this is possible but rare. If your cup is leaking profusely, it might be that this has happened. This is a rare case of a cervix tilt being an issue for cup users. If you have a high cervix, a cup like this cup, a lily cup, would be a good fit for you. If you have a lower cervix, you need a shorter cup. Everything should be in your body. Nothing, including the stem, should be sticking out. If the stem is sticking out, you can trim part of it so that it fits you better. Of course, you do want to remove the cup before. Menstrual cups, because they create a suction and a seal, have to have the seal broken when removing. Do not simply tug on the cup stem. You want to reach in and pinch to remove your cup. And believe it or not, it's not messy. Everything stays in the cup. You pull straight down and then dump. To put your menstrual cup in, there are many different methods of folding, but you essentially want to make it as narrow as possible to put it in comfortably. So this is the punch down fold, and I do have another video teaching you all the different types of menstrual cup folds, but this is my favorite for beginners. It has a narrow point of insertion, and it has a place for you to hold the product. Once you have the cup folded, you'll gently push it between your labia minora lips and push inside. Try to keep the cup folded as long as you can while inserting until it's higher inside you. I like to kind of walk my cup in with my thumb and pointer fingers. You should only have to have about the length of your fingernails up to about the first knuckle inside you to insert a cup. Because you can't see inside your body, it's not always apparent that your menstrual cup has opened. And so if you are curious, you can reach inside and feel around and see if it feels fully open. If not, you can push and try to push against the vaginal wall to see if it allows for the uh, cup to open all the way. And there are lots of other um, troubleshooting ideas that I have in that same fold video. The cup cannot get lost in your body because there's nowhere for it to go. This blocks it from going anywhere else. If it does feel like it's stuck, you can squat and it will be easier to reach for removal. And now because there are new products on the market, I wanted to talk a little bit about your anatomy and how that works with a menstrual disc. A menstrual disc is 
a different kind of product. It doesn't take up the vaginal canal like a menstrual cup, so it can be worn during penetrative intercourse, and there are some other benefits, and that is covered in another one of my videos. But anatomy-wise, I wanted to show how it works and where it sits. You do squeeze it long ways to insert, push the folded disc with the open part facing up towards you, and slide between the labia minora lips. Push inside toward the tailbone so that the disc can tuck behind your cervix. Then push the front of the disc up high to prop it against the pubic bone and secure it. And then you're done. A menstrual cup is held in place by the combination of a suction and your pelvic floor muscles. A menstrual disc is held in place by how it tucks and is propped up against the pubic bone. In this particular space that looks tinted out, that is actually called the vaginal fornix, and that's where a menstrual disc sits. Even though it does look quite large in diameter and intimidating, it fits just fine. This is the posterior fornix, and this is the anterior fornix in front of and behind the cervix, which is where a menstrual disc sits. And because it doesn't have a suction or a seal, some people prefer these if they have an IUD in place. I will note that both cups and discs are safe to use with an IUD placed. You just want to be very careful when you remove them, not to grab the strings, and if you're removing a menstrual cup, make sure you break the suction. But because these don't have suction, there is a chance you might prefer this to a menstrual cup. A note about penetrative intercourse. You cannot have sex with a menstrual cup in place since it takes up most or all of the vaginal canal. You can comfortably have sex while a menstrual disc is in place if you want to. Let's talk about the pelvic floor. This is a network of muscles like a hammock and it affects menstrual cup users. It's why the period nirvana quiz asks you about your activity level. If you have a strong pelvic floor, you might need a cup that's firm when you squeeze it because the muscles might be strong enough to push the cup down while walking. So if it happens, you want a firmer cup or even a disc. If you don't work your pelvic floor and it's weakened after pregnancy or age, you would be best suited to an average firmness cup or a softer cup or also a disc. Another tip if you are considering menstrual cups is to know your cervix height. Cervix is the, we'll call it the base of the uterus as we look at it from this view, but um, it is kind of the exit and or entrance to the uterus. <laughs> I, would, I would consider it more of an exit because it's really a one way out situation. Um, everything comes out, there's really nothing that goes in. And that is why when you are on your period, um, and you are wearing a menstrual cup, if you are laying down or having doing a handstand, things like that, the menstrual fluid that was collected in the cup is not going to flow back inside your body. That won't happen. So if you are looking to try a menstrual cup, it, one of the things I would tell you before looking into anything is to measure your cervix height. I know this sounds not super fun, but it's really necessary. So going back to my uh, pretend it's my body, you would reach inside, and feel for the cervix. And when you feel it, you will take a finger out, measure how much was inside your body, and use that measurement to say, a cup that is longer than that won't fit in my body. With or without the stem, that is up to you. You also wanna do this while you're on your period because believe it or not, the cervix does move up and down throughout your cycle, which is something that most people don't know. So another thing to point out when you are wearing a cup is as we mentioned the cervix, your cup is designed to be worn sealed inside the vagina, but below the cervix to some level. There's no rule that says it has to be an inch away or a half an inch or a quarter of an inch away from the cervix. It's all about what fits and feels comfortable for you. That said, if you find when you're using your cup, your cervix is sitting inside the cup, as long as it's comfortable for you, that's okay. If it feels like there's a sharp, intense pain that means that it might be on your cervix and suction to your cervix. And in that case, you don't want that because of course it is uncomfortable. So when you go to remove your cup, make sure you break your seal and you might have to pick a cup with a larger diameter that doesn't stick and suction to the cervix. Um, you know, or you just want to be very careful next time to make sure it is placed low enough that it doesn't come into contact. Occasionally menstrual cups do walk up which means that if that cup continues to walk up and meet your cervix, you probably need a different cup. So a few key things to point out about anatomy as it relates to using a menstrual cup that some people aren't aware of, and this will make sense if you try a menstrual cup, and you'll know exactly what's going on and probably how to fix it. All these things you'll be looking out for when you use your menstrual cup, 
for the first few cycles. So as we mentioned, this is the bladder. That is in the front side of your body. Sometimes when you are a menstrual cup user, if you are having slow urination or if you feel pressure, like you have to urinate, but only when you're wearing your cup, that's a sign that your menstrual cup is too firm, meaning it's putting outward pressure. So this would make a lot of sense if it is pressing, this material is pressing outward, pressing against the urethra, pressing against the bladder, that can apply some pressure. So you probably want a softer cup, possibly a narrower, smaller diameter cup. So those are two things to consider when you have that experience. Also, it is in front of the rectum. So the same story, if you feel like you have pressure, outward pressure on your rectum, you probably need a softer, less firm cup. There are a lot of advantages to using a product like a menstrual cup or a menstrual disc, namely that they don't absorb your body's natural moisture like a tampon. They're not rigid and dry. You can wear them up to 12 hours and they're more convenient because you can wear them up to 12 hours so you go the whole day without having to think about changing your products, but they're also more convenient in that you don't ever run out. You get to reuse the same product. You just wash it and you store it and you wait for the next cycle. You never have to think about doing a midnight target run or sending your partner or friend to get your products because you ran out and didn't know. So there are so many reasons why switching to a menstrual cup or a menstrual disc can make life easier even though it does look quite intimidating and scary, I promise it's not as bad as it looks. There is a learning curve for both of these products. Usually it takes between one and three cycles before you really get the hang of it. And that's you learning what angle works on insertion. That's you learning uh, you know, which fold works better for your body. It's learning you know, just generally how to navigate life as a new menstrual cup or menstrual disc user. And that definitely does take time. <laughs> It took me about one and a half cycles to feel like I wasn't leaking and then probably another cycle until I felt like I was really nailing it. And typically, I'm gonna be honest, most people don't nail it on their first try. There's a lot of touch and go, uh, you know, scary moments where you don't know what you're doing. You're very anxious, it's very stressful. Um, I completely remember being in that moment uh, when I first tried a menstrual cup almost 10 years ago now. Um, of course, it's old hat at this point. Uh, I've used God knows how many different cups and discs, and I will say I prefer discs, but they're a lot messier to remove and a lot more involved to insert. So if you've never tried any internal protection, I typically recommend a menstrual cup first, simply because it's a little bit easier to put in without having to go deep into your body. Um, and a menstrual disc, you do have to go quite a bit more into your vaginal canal to insert and remove. If that doesn't bother you, uh, menstrual discs do uh, typically have less fiddling about what size is best. And there's all kinds of things to know about menstrual cups that this video won't be able to go into because it's just too much, like firmness and uh, length and diameter and sizing. That's all uh, you know, a bigger topic, but right now it's just about how it works inside you so that you feel comfortable knowing it's not going to get lost inside your body. It's not going to uh, be stuck forever because you can't, it can't go anywhere. It only goes out. I hope that answers some of your intro and beginner questions about how a menstrual cup works. I know it's very scary looking and uh, new for most people, but the good news is that since I started educating about cups, most people have heard of them. When I started videos like this almost 10 years ago on my uh, first YouTube channel, which is this channel, but um, I left for a while for another uh, endeavor, and when I was publishing videos, most people had never even heard of a menstrual cup. So we've come such a long way. And I think just understanding the basics of your anatomy will make it make so much more sense when you decide hopefully to make the switch. If you are thinking about switching, I would love to help by taking some of that confusion out of the process because there are so many cups and now a few discs on the market. How do you know which one's the right one for you? What you can do is go to periodnirvana.com and take the quiz I designed. Answer a few questions and the quiz will match you to which menstrual cup or disc is a match for you. It was expertly engineered and each person will have a unique path based on their answers for a customized experience that brings you to one of over 25 diverse and unbiased results. And then if you decide to buy one, if you purchase from period.shop, that's my retail store and I would love to be part of that journey with you. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I will see you in the next video and go into a pad or period on the bear. So, oh shit. 
I didn't notice that this was back here. It's probably not catching any of my audio, is it? <laughs> if you, yeah, yes, thank you. I can't. <laughs> if you've ever won, what? 